Welcome to One on One, the Daily Items weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guest is Sunbury City Councilman Jim Eister, interviewed by Francis Garcella. The Sunbury Motor Company. Austin Martin, Kia Elite Sales Consultant, Maranatha Christian School. Amber Wren, Certified Hyundai and Lincoln Sales Consultant, Seals Rivera High School. Ian Chukuski, Certified Ford Sales Professional, Mount Carmel and Shemokin area. Christopher Stengline, Ford Certified Sales Consultant, Seals Grove area high school. Tom Mertz, fourth generation owner, Sunbury Motor Company, Shikolini High School. A tradition of trust since 1915. Welcome to One on One. I'm Francis Scarcella. This week we're joined with Sunbury City Councilman Jim Eister, also in charge of parks and recreation here in the city. And you're coming off a big weekend, a big four-day weekend with Sunbury Celebration. So I know that I was down there. I know that there was a ton of people down there. It was hot. Uh, you give out free ice cream. You do it all down there. So tell us a little bit about exactly, I know it's about 18 years that this has been going on. Been tell us there. about the process that this is, because it starts today pretty much to start for next year. So tell yes. us a little bit about that. We'll start recapping things. So we have a meeting coming up 1st of August, and we'll sit down and go over the four-day event things that we make better next year, things we want to change to improve things, to bring more events in for the children. This is a four day for children and families. And of course, we started out the, the first uh, day, of course, was at the Open Harbor Playground. That was on Thursday. And uh, we had roughly two to 300 children there with the families. That's free, right? I mean, so everything's free. And they get hot dogs. And hot dogs, the water, and so forth. These products are all donated by local businesses, which... Uh, which we refer or rely on uh, every year, which they are uh, uh, very uh, giving to the children and the parents for, for those events. And then you go into Friday, which is another, they also have other things up at the pool. Right, right Friday that. we have the Splash Shop. Also we have the hot dogs and water free there. The, uh, the Splash Shop, of course, there's music there. And, of course, the, uh, all the slides and the events for the, the family. It was packed up there Friday. It was packed. Uh, each day, uh, uh, I think they had estimated 250 to 300 children there Friday night. And then Saturday is the big day. Saturday is the big day. That's, of course, everybody waits for the fireworks. It starts, we set up uh, Friday evening. The vendors come in. We set that up uh, all day. We start early in the morning setting the vendors up for the crafters and so forth on 4th Street. And there's vendors from all over selling all different items. Uh, roughly 10 o'clock is when the, the families start coming. Ball games are all day long. There's a tournament that weekend. So you see children from out of the area coming for the tournament for the playing ball. And as the games are over, they come in and they, they walk th through the fairway there. And they're giving out hot dogs all day also to the children and family members. Ice cream. Uh, Wise Marcus steps up and gives 100 pieces of a. Uh, uh, ice cream, uh, either from the sandwiches to the Nutty Buddies and so forth. And of course we give them away free. Uh, there's free popcorn for the children and other games and so forth. And uh, uh, that runs all day long. And of course the big thing uh, that evening are the fireworks. Yeah, the fireworks. So with that being said, have you seen this grow throughout the last? Yes, uh, definitely. We get, and one last thing about growing, businesses have really stepped up. And uh, uh, from the T-shirts and, uh, and uh, all the other items I just mentioned, fireworks are done by Zembelli's, which is a nationally recognized uh, fireworks company. And uh, the school district participates, allowing us to use their site where Chief Chickamy is. And uh, we estimate around 10,000 viewing from the river to all the, the hills and valleys around the uh, general area. For the fireworks. fireworks, but let's face it, uh, Jody Shovlin, city resident, is pretty much the the mastermind behind this this weekend. Jody, uh, she coordinates all the details, putting everything together for the children, and she works with all the vendors coming in that are donating certain items and so forth. Jody is the key backbone of the whole operation. And if you know Jody, she's rough, so she'll get on you and keep you going. Yeah, and I'm sure I saw I witnessed her yelling at you about doing yes, certain things. So making sure things are done. So she's dedicated, and it's a small group you guys yes, have that put this together. It's a small group, a summary celebration group, and uh, uh, we've been all together for all these years, and we worked the stands that Saturday, 
And uh, so it's like a reunion for you guys once uh, a year. It's a f- long four yeah. days. My, yeah. my joke uh, is I can't wait for Monday morning to go back to work. To go back, yeah. Which is Sunday is the soapbox derby, and that's that always is a growing. Yes, we start early in the morning. Our summary fire police does an excellent job. They shut down the streets to take care of all that, and then we start setting up for the soapbox derby. Uh, the first race goes off at 11. We have four divisions. And uh, very successful. The children really love it. Uh, once again, we have trophies and medallions for all the children from the different divisions. That's all donated by different businesses. And I'll tell you, the city does a, uh, a good job of cleaning up because I was up on Fourth Street Sunday morning, and there's you can't even tell anybody was there. We have a crew comes in roughly 10 o'clock. Fireworks are over about 10:15 to all the vendors. They work until midnight cleaning up, and. Uh, Municipal Authority, of course, brings in dumpsters, and we clean the whole premise up. So Sunday morning, uh, people coming by, it doesn't look like a... doesn't look like anything happened. Right. With that being said, here's the big question that seems to be, and, and maybe it's because of a competition thing and maybe not, but why is it always the week after the 4th of July? Well, because of the fact uh, Pine Niners has their event over there, and we don't want to run competition with another community, your neighbors. And... Uh, Residents from Summer go to see Pine Air Day, and residents from Nori come over and uh, visit us. And, and Shemokin's fireworks and stuff like that. So you just don't want to compete with any other. You do right. your own thing, let them have their time, and you guys have exactly. your time here. So we step back one week. Right. Works out perfect for everybody. I think Summer is kind of the last ones of the yes. going on. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it allows uh, more people to come see ours because if everybody be the same day, you can't you know, drive from town to town watching fireworks. All night long, right. All night long. Uh, and this summer celebration is totally separate than Riverfest, which is which will be coming up as yes. well. That's another uh, another that's a two day event, uh, yes. right? It's Friday and Saturday, and they exactly. and they wrap that up. But it's always a good, it's always good for the community when you when you're sitting back because I know I talked with you about this. There you're sitting back and you see all the kids coming. They just love it. It's a, it's like one of those just fun Saturdays. For that's them. true, especially when you're handing out uh, free ice cream and hot dogs, and they look at you. And it's funny the children say, well, how much is it? No, it's free. And they kind of take him back a little bit. We had a family, uh, two children and husband and wife come, stopped in, and they were from the uh, lower uh, end of the county down there for uh, street fair or not, uh, yard sales. And uh, they were coming back up through, and they were from up above uh, where they resided, and they stopped in to see what was going on. And we gave the children some ice cream and hot dogs, and they said, well, uh, why is it free? Well, this is for the children, a four-day event. For They said they never heard anything, that everything's free for the children. And I said that's why we're so proud of uh, holding this uh, four-day event because uh, we were proud the fact we're giving away for free. And with that being said, I know that we're going to come mm-hmm. back and we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Sunbury Pool because you're also in charge of that up there. And uh, it, that's one of the drawing points to the Sunbury Recreation up there at the ice rink. So when we come back, we'll discuss the pool with Councilman Jim Meister. The Sunbury Motor Company. Austin Martin, Kia Elite Sales Consultant, Maranatha Christian School. Amber Wren, Certified Hyundai and Lincoln Sales Consultant, Seals Bavaria High School. Ian Chukuski, Certified Ford Sales Professional, Mount Carmel and Shemokin area. Christopher Stangline, Ford Certified Sales Consultant, Seals Bavaria High School. Tom Mertz, fourth generation owner, Sunbury Motor Company, Chicolini High School. A tradition of trust since 1915. We're back with Councilman Jim Meister. Sunbury Pool, yes. big draw. Uh, yes. the pools, I know the Nori Pool had closed down. So Sunbury's one of the biggest pools in the area. Uh, we we just did a, uh, a report here on pools, and it's one of the cleanest pools in the area. Uh but there's some problems with it, right? There's some things that need to be fixed, and, and it's well, been... It's we actually point. talked about it. We saw an article that was in from 1960, the day the pool got approved. By yes. dumb luck, it was in the same day. So, But tell us about that, what what you've seen so far that's that's been... Well, our pool is 20 years old since the last uh, rehab, and we spent uh, $600,000 back in those days. And, of course, that's when we put the slide and the splash area in and so forth. Now, 20 years later, there's um, work be done in the pool itself, it's a plaster pool, and there's some patchwork, and there's two seams that need some work done. And we are, at the present time, working on cost estimates and looking where the funding will come from for 2020. But that's on the, uh, on the agenda to be repaired next spring. 
but the pool overall is doing very well. Uh, the, the crowds are uh, higher than uh, last year. Of course, Nori did, the pool has closed mm-hmm. down. The pool is like an asset to the community. So I know if you look at the numbers, you can say that the pool kind of evens itself out, maybe loses here and there. But but the, I guess at the at the end of the day, it's for the community. So And with the ice rink being as successful as well, it is. Ice rink does very well. But back to the pool. The pool does one good thing in the summer months. Children have no place really to where they can play their ball and so forth. But it gives some place where the children come cool down, have some fun. Of course, there's ice cream and hot dogs there, pizza and so forth for lunchtime. We have a lunch program, though. Every day at lunchtime, we give out roughly 50 lunches at the Summer Community Pool. If children comes, has no money to take and get a lunch, we provide a lunch. That's through the YMC program. Ron Pratt runs that program and all oversees the pool. But then we have Tammy Forbes and Carl Yoder, which works for the city. If you take and come visit us at the pool, you'll see the pool is maintained uh, with the Tammy with the flowers and so forth. It's always kept up very. And there's somebody well. always there, so it's safe. Yes. It's safe to so, drop your kid off and go and yeah. come back. It's excellent lifeguards. We provide. Uh, I mean, even security wise, it's just a safe oh, area. Yes. Yeah. So with w- saying that, too, what would you say to the people that say, "Well, the pool it loses money. It does this. It does that." What would well, you say? Community pools are tough to make. It's <clears> not really money making. It's providing a service for the families and giving the children some place to come during the daytime instead of just out getting in trouble per se. But it, it's good for overall for the community itself. And with the hot days coming up, I'm sure it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, we were discussing a little bit ago, 97 Saturday, the pool should be packed. I talked to Mr. Pratt about a half an hour ago, and he's expecting big days in the next five days because we have some 96s and uh, temperature-wise, and uh, I'm sure the pool's going to be packed to the hill. Well. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. I know you're. Uh, I know you're a busy man, and I know you have a lot of things going on. But you did say that it starts. I know Jody, so she's already started next year's Sunbury celebration. So I spoke to her two, three hours ago, and she has all the paperwork together, and we're going to start reviewing all the numbers. Perfect. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for watching One on One. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition.